Okay guys, so um, we are going to finish up the last page of the notes that we started yesterday. Um, so this is volume of known cross sections, um, day one still. We're just gonna finish up this last page, okay? So first thing here, let's uh, set up our region. So we have negative two X squared plus nine. So we know that's a parabola that's gonna open down. Okay, so we'll say nine is here, negative two is gonna be pretty narrow. Um, and then I have X squared minus three, which is gonna be opening up and passing through maybe like down here, okay? So obviously you can see you have your little region, okay, that's bounded between those curves, just like that. Um, and then uh, remember that my next step would be to find the intersection points and then to define what the distance across the base is gonna look like. So let's find the intersection points first, so here and here. So remember, I'm gonna set these two things equal, and then I'm gonna get everything on the same side. I'm gonna bring these guys over. Remember, I'm doing that because I wanna try to keep my x squared positive if I can. So this is a plus two x squared and a plus two x squared. Um, which obviously is going to give me 3x squared. Then I'm going to minus 9 and minus 9, which is going to give me a minus 12. Nothing's left over here, so it's just a 0. Then I'm going to take out my 3. That's going to give me x squared minus 4, which means that this is going to be 2 and negative 2. Okay, then from there, we need to define the distance across our base. Remember, you can draw this in anywhere on the picture. It really doesn't matter. But if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, it's going to be this direction, which means that it's going to be top minus bottom. So I'm going to do base equals top minus bottom. Remember, top being the top border of the region, so that's this one minus the bottom, which is this one. So it'd be negative 2x squared plus nine is gonna come first. And then minus x squared minus three is gonna come second. Now, keep in mind you're subtracting that whole thing. So when you go to combine like terms and stuff like that, you should make sure that you're distributing that negative. So I'm gonna have b equals negative 2x squared minus another x squared is a minus three x squared. And then nine minus negative three is really a plus three, so that's a plus 12, okay? Um, so here we go. Our squares, remember that for a square, these sides have to match. So when I find the area of a square, it's usually base times height, but in this case, it's base times base again because these match. So then remember, to get from area to volume, I just have to integrate this. So it's going to be negative 3x squared plus 12 dx. Then remember, my endpoints are going to follow the same endpoints that I had in my region, which is negative 2 to 2. Okay. Next, what we want to do is a rectangle. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at our rectangle. Uh, rectangle looks like this. Okay, then remember the way that you find the area of a rectangle is base times height. But this time, they're telling me that height is going to be 2x plus 1. So my area is going to be the base multiplied by height, which is 2x plus 1. And then remember, to turn area into volume, I just have to integrate it. So I'm going to do volume equals the integral. Okay, then over here, remember my base is a negative 3x squared plus 12. That's my base multiplied by my height, which is a 2x plus 1 from negative 2 to 2. All right, next one, we're going to do a triangle. Okay, so triangle, think about that. Doesn't tell us it's a right triangle, so we don't know. Okay, but remember, area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And then they're telling me the height is going to be 2x plus 4. So then I would say, okay, well then area equals one half distance across the base multiplied by the height, which is two X plus four. And then I'm ready to do my volume. Remember, you just have to integrate. So it'd be one half, my base is a negative three X squared plus 12. And then my height is a two X plus four, and then a DX. 
negative two to two on the endpoints. Okay, next shape is a semi-ellipse. So remember for an ellipse, that's like an oval basically. So you're gonna have your base radius here, your vertical radius here. Remember we usually call this one J and this one K. So area equals one half pi J K. Um, and then remember that this entire distance across the bottom is the base. So if I only want length J, oh, you can't even see that. Um, if I only want length J, then I need to use base over two for that. So it's a half pi base over two. And then they tell me that for my ellipse, my height is gonna be four. And then I would say, okay, well, half of four, that's really just a two. So I have two pi times base over two, but then I notice those guys are gonna cross out as well. So really it's just gonna be pi times the base. And then I can sub back in uh, my substitution here for the base, which is negative three X squared plus 12. Sub that in right here, and then we'll have our volume. So negative two to two pi, and then my base is negative three X squared plus 12. Now, one other thing I want to point out, anytime you have a constant, like here I have a pi, or here I have a one half, any of those numbers can be moved outside the integral. Remember, you can never move x's to the outside, but if it's just a number like that, you can move it out, okay? All right, so we have two more left with this shape, and then we're moving on to doing these dy. So semicircle, draw your little semicircle here. Okay, remember that this entire distance across the bottom is the base. Okay, that's what would be drawn basically into this part of the region that's running top to bottom. And you'd have like all these little, you know, semicircles or whatever. Um, so area for a semicircle is one half pi r squared. Then we have to remember that the r is only half of that distance because it's the radius. So that would be one half pi base over two squared. And then remember, I can simplify that down or just memorize it from the other page. Um, so this would be one half pi. And then when I square this entire thing, it becomes b over four. And then the two and the four on the bottom become a pi over eight and then multiplied by the base. Oops, and then I forgot the squared here because um, it was b over two squared. Got it? Then from there, um, I'm gonna show you with the constant on the outside. So when I do my integral, I'm gonna put pi eighths here and then my base squared here, which is a negative three x squared plus 12 from negative two to two. Okay, but keep in mind, you could easily put that on the inside. You just can also put it on the outside. I wanted to show it to you both ways. Okay. All right, last one, equilateral triangles. Um, remember, this requires you to remember your special right triangles. Okay, so in equilateral, all three sides have to match each other. Remember that this is the base, but I have to divide it into... A mini triangle so that I know what the height is since your height always has to be perpendicular to your base. Okay then remember that we talked about if this is equilateral then it has to also be equiangular which means that each of these have to be 60 degrees and if that guy's 60 then that guy's 30 that makes it a 30 60 90 triangle. So my long side here is going to be the base my side here is gonna be the base over two, which means that the height from here to here is gonna be base over two root three. And then remember from there, I can write my area equation. So area is gonna equal one half base. Remember that's the full base because we want the area of this whole triangle. One half base times height, where the height is base over two root three. And then remember, the half and the half can combine to be a fourth multiplied by the root three becomes a root three over four b squared. Okay, and then remember from there, we're going to turn that into volume. So it's going to be volume equals root three over four can go on the outside, negative two to two still for the endpoints, and then my base, which was negative three x squared plus 12.
squared dx. Okay. All right, so hopefully you, for the most part, are good with that. Now we are going to take these and do them dy. So if you will move to uh, your next sheet, which is going to be uh, volume of known cross sections, but this time they're going to be dy. Okay, and so remember this is going to be where you're working um, sideways versus working up and down, okay? But it's basically the same thing. Um, so let's see, this top one is just a review question, so we're gonna skip that. We're gonna just jump right down um, to here. So it says volume by cross sections with respect to y. So you're gonna have two functions that are both going to be functions with respect to y. So let's say here's your region. Okay, let's talk about some of the big differences. Um, so cross sections are gonna be taken sideways. That's gonna be your base, which means that instead of being perpendicular to the x-axis, they're gonna be perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay, you can see the y-axis is here. And so if I'm taking my bases this way, then that means that um, I'm gonna be perpendicular to the y-axis. Second thing, your integration boundaries are gonna be the y values here and here. So we'll say this is y equals c, this is y equals d. So when I set up my integral, it's gonna be from c to d. And then my area is gonna be a function of y, okay? Now, um, the other thing here, this is very important, your equations have to be in x equals y stuff form. And then your base region, it's running sideways, but it's gonna be the right boundary minus the left boundary, okay? So it says, consider the same region enclosed in the first quadrant by three x squared, the y axis, and the horizontal line y equals 12. So let's draw it. So 3x squared is here, horizontal line y equals 12 is here, but then it also says that I want to include the first quadrant only and that I need the y-axis to be a side. So that means I'm actually just looking at this distance right here. So it says, sketch the graph and label the equations in terms of y. What that means is that your line has to be in x equals form. So if I'm looking at y equals 3x squared, well, then I'd have to divide the 3 across. So now it's a y over 3 equals x squared. And then I'd have to square root both sides. So that equation is going to be x equals the square root of y over 3. That's this border now. Now, keep in mind that technically when I square root, I get a plus or minus the square root of y over 3. This is the plus side, and then this over here would have been the minus branch of that. Okay? So kind of like you can have a square root go up or down. Now my square root's either going to be on the right side of the y-axis or the left side. Okay? Um, and then the other thing, too, a horizontal line, you can never change that to be an x equals. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then this line here, if this is the y-axis, we're gonna call that x equals zero. Okay, so it says sketch up and uh, set up an integral to represent the area of region R, that's this guy with respect to y. So I would say area equals, then I need to give my y values of my endpoint. So obviously my x squared starts at zero and then it goes up here to 12 so zero to 12 and then I need to do the right side minus the left side so I'm going to be doing this side minus this side this is the right border this is the left border so when I set those up I'm going to do the square root of y over three because that's this right side minus this left side which is a zero now obviously you don't have to put the minus zero you can if you want to but you don't have to Okay. Um, all right. Then second part of the question says set up an integral to represent a solid uh, 
to represent the volume of a solid with region R as its base with square cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. This is what changes it to be dy. Okay, when I draw that cross section perpendicular to the y-axis, look at the direction that it runs. If this is the y-axis and I'm perpendicular to that, I'm running sideways. So that tells me that my base is going to be right to left. Okay, which is exactly like area. It's not like it's something you've never seen before. So my base is the right side, which is root y over 3, minus the left side, which is 0. Okay, then I want square cross section. So if my shape is a square, area is going to be base squared. And then remember, if I want volume, I just have to integrate that. So I'm going to do y over 3 minus 0 squared dy. Notice, these are y's. That should be a y. These should be y's. So remember, my bottom was a 0. My top was a 12. So it would be 0 to 12. Now, the other thing that I want to just kind of briefly point out about is that this type of integral, you should easily be able to work out by hand. Um, so when you square the square root, these are going to end up crossing out to where this is really just the integral from 0 to 12 um, of y over 3. And that should be a pretty easy integral for you to do by hand. Um, and I wish I hadn't written so big, but I did. So I'm going to just do it over here just to show you. So remember, y over 3 is the same as a third y. And I like that sort of presentation better because then it reminds you you need to add 1 to your power. So that would become a y squared. And then you would have to divide by 2. Well, if I divide a third by 2, that's a sixth. Remember, I put that in the brackets. And then I'm going to plug in my endpoints, which was a 12 on top. And then a 0 on bottom. Okay, 12 squared is 144. So I'd have a sixth of 144. And then on bottom, if I plug in a zero, I get a zero, and then I'd take these two and subtract. So your final answer would be 144 over six, which of course, I'm pretty sure that divides out, but no big deal, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So a lot of times on the AP test, they are going to give you either something that you're gonna work out in a calculator, or they'd give you something like that, where like the square root and the squared kind of fix themselves, okay? Go ahead and turn the page, please. All right, next one, we have y equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 4. So let's set that up. Uh, y equals x squared is here. y equals 0 is here. Okay, remember that if it's y equals 0, that's really just the x-axis. And then x equals 4 is here. So this is my region that I need to be in. Okay, then look at your important um, instruction here. I wanna find the volume of the solid with cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. And you gotta look at the direction that base is gonna be running. So if this is the y-axis and I wanna be perpendicular, okay, I'm gonna be running that direction. So I would say, okay, well then my base needs to be right minus left. Okay, so let's label the right side. This is x equals four. And then let's label the left side. This is x equals, uh-oh, it's in the wrong form. I'm gonna have to fix it. So if y equals x squared, then square root both sides, x equals root y. So that's what we're gonna call the right side of that. So my base is gonna be four minus root y. And remember, it does not matter what shape I pick, I would still be using that base no matter what. Um, okay, then the only other thing that I have not yet found is this intersection point up here. So I wanna just make something um, obvious to you real quick. You can only set equations equal when they are solved the same way. So for example, if they're both in x equals, say like these two, I can set those equal. I cannot set x equals four equal to y equals x squared and solve that, that's not a thing. So if they're both in x equals form, you can go ahead and set them equal. 
But if you have a mismatch form like this where one of them's just a number, you can just plug it in. So for example, if X is four, what is Y gonna be if I do four and then I square it? Well, then this point here is four comma 16. But the point is that this Y value is 16, lower Y value is four, or I'm sorry, lower Y value is zero, upper Y value is 16. Okay, but remember, I need those because those are gonna be my endpoints since I'm doing it dy, okay? So first one we want are squares. Okay, remember for a square, area is base squared. Then remember to get to volume, I'm just gonna integrate that. So I'm gonna go from zero to 16. The distance across my base, which is four minus root y squared dy, and you're done, okay? Next one, semicircle, area equals, we could figure it out again, but we already know what it is. Okay, it's on your notes from yesterday, it's pi eighths b squared. So I would say, okay, well then if I want volume, that's the integral of that. Remember, I can put pi eighths in the integral or I can put it in front of the integral, doesn't matter. Four minus root y squared dy. Next one, I want equilateral triangles. Well, I'm just gonna be lazy and look back. I don't have this one memorized. Equilateral triangles, remember it works out to be root three over four uh, b squared. So area equals root three over four b squared, which means that my volume is the integral of that. Remember, inside or outside, doesn't matter, zero to 16. My base is four minus root y squared dy. Okay, and then um, let's see, semi-ellipse. Remember that your area for that is one half pi j k. Um, and then here it says that the height is four times the length of the base. So let's just kind of sketch that here. So remember that this is the base. The height is gonna be four times the base. But then remember that I don't actually want for my J, that's not this entire distance, it's only half of it. So I would have one half pi. J is this distance, which is base over two. And then K is this distance, which is four times the base. So we have quite a few things here to uh, simplify. So half of half is a fourth but then I have a four, so essentially all of that is gonna cross out because I'd have pi fourths, four b squared, and then those would cross out. So really I just have pi b squared. And then remember, that's area. If I want volume, I just have to put an integral on it. So pi base squared dy, zero to 16. Sorry. Uh, and then my base was four minus root y. Now the other thing that I want to just kind of point out to you um, is let's, what if I subtract these backwards? Okay, think about if I'm squaring it, that mistake actually wouldn't cost you a point on the AP test because when you square something, the order that you have in here doesn't really matter. It's going to come out positive anyway. So obviously try to set it up right, but since a lot of these ended up with squares on them, you actually wouldn't lose any points if you accidentally did root y minus four instead of four minus root y. All right, last one. Okay, so I have x equals y cubed, and then I have six y squared. So let's see, it looks like one, two, three, Okay, it looks like this is the squared function. So this is x equals six y squared. And then this one over here is gonna be the other function, which is x equals y cubed. Okay. So the next thing that I need to do before I do anything else is uh, draw in my base. So it's gonna be perpendicular to the y-axis, which means that it's gonna run this way. Remember, it's just gonna stay right between your borders. Um, and I'm gonna do right minus left. So my base is gonna be the right side, which is 
6y squared minus the left side, which is 6y or y cubed. Okay, that's my base. All right, then from there, I gotta find my intersection points. So I'm going to let y cubed be equal to 6y squared. Um, I'm gonna bring everything over to the left side. So I have y cubed minus 6y squared equals zero. Then I'm gonna factor out a y squared. And that leaves me with a y minus six, which means that these intersect at two places. Your y in the front tells you they cross at zero. Your second one means they cross at six. Now, keep in mind that this is y equals six. So we don't know how this is labeled, um, but they're gonna cross, I guess this is six right here. So that's y equals six, that's y equals zero, okay? So first one says rectangles where the height is half the length of the base. The height is half the length of the base. Okay, well a rectangle is gonna be base times height, but then I know the height is half the length of the base, so it's base times half the base, which is half base squared. Then I go to write my volume. So I'm gonna put the one half on the outside. Remember, technically it doesn't really matter Okay, then it says uh, my base was this guy over here, 6y squared minus y cubed. And then it was half b squared dy. And then my endpoints, remember, if this is y, they have to be y's as well. So my bottom one is 0, my top one is 6. Now, that is not one that they'd probably make you work out by hand. Probably for something like that, you'd have your calculator. Okay. Um, all right, last one like that. Isosceles right triangle with the hypotenuse as the base. So let's draw that. We did one of these yesterday, um, but we only did it, I think, once. Okay, so isosceles right triangle means that these guys match, but the hypotenuse is the base. So this is the base, which is opposite your right triangle. Okay, so remember the way that we worked this out yesterday, we said, um, if these are your legs and they match, then these are your angles, they have to match. So that makes this a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Then remember that when I draw my height into my triangle, I basically have to like cut that big triangle in half. And think about that if this top angle up here used to be 90 degrees, now it's like a little baby 45, 45, 90 triangle which means that in this little baby triangle here, okay, this side and this side have to match. And so if this is the base, this is the base over two, which means that this is the base over two. So when I do area, it's one half base times height, but it's one half base times the height is base over two again which means that really I have a fourth B squared. Okay. Then from there I can say, okay, well, volume equals a fourth integral zero to six, and then my base, which was six Y squared minus Y cubed DY. Okay. All right, so go ahead and take a look at your homework for me. So remember, you're still working on this homework right here, homework three. Um, and I'll maybe just pick like two questions. We can kind of work through one all the way through. And then if you guys have questions on this, just message me on Remind 101. Um, I can send out videos um, of the homework help or I can just work it into your next notes video, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just work through number two um, since it has so many parts. So first, let's just start by graphing it. So it says I want to be in the first quadrant bounded by y equals 2 and y equals square root x. So y equals 2, flat line, square root x starts here and then kind of goes off like that. Okay. So if I want to be in the first quadrant and bounded by those two things, then I got to stay between those. Okay, so it says sketch the graphs and uh, shade the region. Check, we did it. Next thing, we need to know where they intersect. 
So these are both in y equals form. That means that I can set them equal. So I'm going to let square root x equal 2, square both sides, x equals 4. So these cross here at x equals 4. Obviously, my region is going to start at 0 because it tells me that I have to be in the first quadrant. Okay? So then it says, if the cross section of the solid are taken perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, so you have to think about if I'm perpendicular to the x-axis, I want to be in dx mode. Okay, I want to be this way because this is the x-axis. I want to be perpendicular to that. That's a top minus bottom. So my base top minus bottom is going to be 2 across the top, square root x across the bottom. So 2 minus root x. And then I have to think about my shape. It says I want them to be squares. Well, then remember that area equals base squared. And if area is b squared, then volume is the integral of that. So I'm going to do 2 minus root x squared dx. Okay, then from there, my endpoints, this is x equals 0, this is x equals 4, so I'd go 0 to 4. Okay? All right, take a look at the next one. It says, if cross-sections of the solid are taken perpendicular to the x-axis and they're isosceles right triangles. Okay, well, that was the root 3 over 4b squared. Okay, I'll just remind you of that. You can always go back and rediscover those um, or just memorize them. Um, then it says, what is the volume of the solid? Is that right? I saw Slay's right trying. Dang it, this was for an equilateral. Never mind. We're going to have to set it up. Um, I just looked back. The root 3 over 4 is when it's an equilateral. So let's set it up. So we're going to have a triangle. Okay, it says it's a right triangle and it's isosceles but it says that one of the legs is in the region. So that means that this is my base here, is a leg. And remember, legs are always the ones that are not um, the hypotenuse. So if this is the base, but it's isosceles, then these are the same. So area is gonna be one half base times height, but really the base and the height are the same. So it's gonna be one half B squared, okay? And then from there, remember, volume is just the integral of that. So I would go from 0 to 4 because those are x values. And then I would do 1 half and then my base, which is 2 minus root x squared dx. Okay. All right, last one. Uh, so it says, resolve the boundary to be written in terms of y. Then write an integral expression for the volume with rectangular cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis where the height is half the base. Okay, so I'm using the same region. Here's what's going to change, though. Okay, I'm going to take my exact same region, okay, which is right here. But this time, when I cut my base in, I have to do it perpendicular to the y-axis. That's this way. And that changes the entire question to where it has to be done dy. So let's talk about what's going to be different. The first thing that's going to change is what I call the equations. So for example, originally this was y equals square root x. Okay, but remember I need it to be an x equals form. So if y equals square root x, then square square x equals y squared. Now you can imagine that if I drew the other side of that, that is y squared, right? Okay, then the other thing that has to change is that I need to have a name for the y-axis, which is this side. So if this is the y-axis, I'm going to call that x equals zero. So my base is going to be right minus left. The right side here is x equals y squared minus the left side, which is zero. Okay, then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the y values of the region. So down here is obviously 0. And then up here, this was y equals 2. So I don't even really have to set anything equal. I just have to look at this equation, y equals 2 is where I'm going to stop. 
So I'm going to do um, next the shape. So it says that I want the height of the rectangle to be half the base. Okay, well remember area equals base times height for a rectangle. Okay, because that's what it tells me that it is. But then it tells me that the height is half the base, which means that I'm doing the base times half the base, which is half b squared. And then I'm ready to set up my volume equation. So integral one half b squared dy. Then remember we said our base is top minus bottom, which is y squared. Technically minus zero, but you don't have to put it. And then my endpoints are zero to two. Now this would also be one that would be really, really easy for you to work out by hand. Um, so imagine if you did have to do this one all the way out. Let me get a sheet of scratch paper here. And you don't have to do this, but it's something to think about, right? Um, so I would have integral zero to two, okay, one half. And then y squared squared is really y to the fourth dy. And then think about it, I could just do regular power rule on that. So my y is going to bump up to be to the fifth power. Then divide by five, now that's a tenth. And then I would plug in 2 and 0 and subtract. So 2 to the 5th is 32. And then 0 is 0. And then you'd subtract these two. So you'd have 32 over 10, which would be uh, 3.2. Now, could you also type that into the calculator? Absolutely. Sure. Okay, but it's just something to think about that a lot of these integrals, either it'll be easy enough that you can work it out by hand or they give you a calculator. Um, okay, let's do a, a two off this back page and then we'll be done. Um, so let's do um, this one. Okay, so it says the region bounded by x equals ln 5y and x equals y squared over 16, form the base of the solid. Now, the obvious uh, thing here, x equals y squared is going to be the quadratic. Okay, now I know you can't really see the other side of it. Okay, but this one is x equals y squared over 16, which means that the other side over here is going to be x equals ln 5y. Okay? That's this side here. Um, so then it says for this solid, um, each cross section perpendicular to the y axis is a square. Okay, so the next thing that I would say is okay, well, then area equals b squared. Oh, that's my timer. Give me one sec. Um, and then the next thing that you would do is find where these two guys cross by typing them into your calculator. So um, when you are working these questions, you'll notice that your calculator does not have an, a Y button. Okay, it really doesn't matter though. You're just gonna do it um, in X mode. So for my first Y equals here, okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm gonna do LN 5X. Then for my second equation, I'm gonna do X squared over 16. Okay, then I'm going to graph it. Now, obviously, my picture and this picture are like flipped of each other because I have it in the wrong mode, but it doesn't matter. No big deal. Second trace five. Enter, enter, enter. And it says that they cross at, this is point two zero zero five. Then I need to find the other one. I'm going to guess, it looks like it happens at like 8 maybe. Okay, so this one here is y equals uh, 7.6336. Okay, now one thing you might be wondering is why I'm taking the x values. Remember that in my calculator, I typed my y's in as x's. So when I want these y values, I really want the x values in the calculator because that's the letter that I used, okay? 
So you're, if you're going to switch the letters when you type it in, you're still looking for an X. Even though really it's a Y, you don't have a Y button, so you use an X. Okay? So uh, we're going to do base next. is going to be cut this way, perpendicular to the Y axis, which means it's going to be right minus left. Right side is going to be uh, LN5Y. Left side is going to be y squared over 60. Okay, that's my base. And then remember, no matter what the shape is, I would still be cutting that base the exact same way, right to left. Okay? So then from there, I would say, all right, well, then volume equals the integral from 0.2005 to 7.6336. And then I need to do my base squared, which was my ln 5y minus y squared over 16 squared dy. And then remember, when you're typing this into the calculator, your calculator doesn't care if it's a y or an x. You're just going to use the x button. Okay, so we're doing math 9. We're going 0.2005 to 6 point, oops, wrong number. 7.6336, and then I'm gonna do parentheses, alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2, quantity squared dx, okay? Now, one thing too to point out is that if I had accidentally written these backwards in the calculator, like let's say my y1 and y2 were reversed, Okay, it wouldn't make a difference because this squared is going to fix it to always be positive. Okay, so I got 19.443. That is answer B. Okay. Um, last one. Let's do number seven. Okay, so it says you have x equals y squared. That's this one. And then you have x equals 2y plus 3. Okay, obviously this one has to be the squared because it's quadratic. Okay, versus the other one is linear. Okay, then I have my region right here that I can just go ahead and shade. Um, and then it says from there my bases are going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. So remember, if this is the y-axis, that means I'm cutting perpendicular so I'm going to do right minus left, and I'm going to do it dy. So that tells me this is a dy integral. Okay. So from there, my base, let's draw that next. My base is right minus left. My right side border is this line here, which is 2y plus 3. Minus my left side, which is here, which is y squared. Okay, so that's going to be my base. You can rearrange the terms on that if you want to make it like in standard form, but it doesn't really matter. Um, then from there, I need to know these intersection points. And just for fun, let's do this by hand, you know, because <laughs> we love it. So uh, we're going to let x equals y squared be equal to x equals 2y plus 3. So I'd have y squared equals 2y plus 3. And then I'm just going to bring these guys over to join the party. So it's y squared minus 2y minus 3, which means I can factor that minus 3m plus 1, which means that I know that these cross at 3 and negative 1. So this y value is negative 1. This y value here is 3. And then remember, I want a square. So the area is base squared. And then the volume would be the integral of that. So I would have volume equals the integral from negative 1 to 3 of the base squared dy, which is this crap right here, 2y plus 3 minus y squared. Okay. And then that one, since I didn't really use the calculator on that, I'm just going to type it in. Um, I'm not going to use y1 and y2 because I don't really need to. So I'm going negative 1 to 3. And then I'm doing parentheses 2x plus 3 minus x squared. And then I'm squaring all of that. And then dx. 
Okay, so take a look at how that looks. And we got 34, which is answer choice D. Okay, good job.